snowshoes. We love them. They're super handy for, you know, like walking on snow. Super handy because nobody likes post holing in a foot and a half of powder over three miles when you're just trying to enjoy a scenic winter hike. But here's the thing. There are tons of snowshoe options out there and frankly, most of them aren't terribly sustainable. But we found two that do in fact leave a lighter footprint. No pun intended, and we're going to talk about them. Starting with these MSR Revo Trail snowshoes, which are the women's versions, though there are only subtle differences and Josh wore them too, so you know, whatever. They are narrow for more natural stride and the new Paraglide mesh bindings offer easy adaptability and fit no matter what type of shoe you're wearing. The deck itself is made of an injection molded plastic with steel crampons and perimeter teeth. So there's plenty of grip for excellent traction and just a bit of flex too. They come in various sizes based on your weight and what type of snow you'll be recreating on in, but there's an easy sizing chart on the website to help you figure that out. Also, you can add on a five inch Evo flotation tail if you'll be walking in more powdery snow and need a little more lift to keep you from sinking in more deep stuff, which very handy to have an add on like that. Plus they feature shiny new paraglide bindings that are a kind of flexible rubbery mesh. They lock in your feet without creating pressure points, which is pretty cool. But what makes them more sustainable than any other snowshoes? Mm -hmm. Well, they're made right here in the USA for starters, in Seattle, in fact which keeps the shipping footprint weighed down. And should you need parts repaired or replaced, that Seattle shop can help you out with that. You just have to send them in. They'll even fix them for free if they're within the three year limited warranty. All because the brand wants to keep as much gear in use and out of the landfill as possible. But let's move on to the TSL Symbios Hyperflex Instinct. <sighs> That's so many, so many words. <laughs> Before we get into how either snowshoe performed. Now, we've tested TSL snowshoes before and we are fans, yeah. but these in particular recently got a binding upgrade. So we were keen to give the updated model a go. The new bindings feature a full foot BOA adjustment system and are compatible with a wide range of shoe sizes. Plus they have a heel lift and a flexible platform for better usability on uneven terrain. These shoes are also fairly narrow, but with an hourglass shape, as you can see, which boosts maneuverability. There's a sound and shock absorbing system in the deck so you can walk quieter, plus carbon reinforcements that are meant to store and redistribute energy as you move. No idea if that actually works. As for traction, there are independent steel crampons plus vertical blades that offer plenty of purchase on pretty much any snow surface. They are also available in various sizes, depending on how large or small a snowshoer you happen to be. As for sustainability, most of what sets these apart is that they are highly repairable. Meaning if something breaks or goes wrong, you can contact TSL and they'll help get you parts to repair your shoes. They also offer a two year warranty, which helps. But enough about technical differences, let's chat about how they compared when we took them out on the trail. Which should be fun, because both of us tried both pairs and definitely had our favorite. But first things first, neither of these are technically entry level snowshoes. I mean, yeah, beginners can definitely use them and yeah. will enjoy either of these, oh. but they are designed for more rugged hikes undertaken by experienced hikers, we'll say. Just putting it out there. We're mostly saying there are cheaper snowshoes out there, okay? But if you want quality snowshoes that are gonna last and can handle some serious winter expeditions, these'll do the trick. So to get right to it, I definitely preferred the BOA binding system on the TSL shoes over the MSR Paraglide bindings, at least as far as ease of use goes. Yeah, the BOA bindings are stupid easy. There's just one adjustment point, so slide in your feet, push the dial down and turn it to tighten. Pull it back up again and give the bindings a yank to loosen and easy as. 
you can even do it with gloves on. The MSR bindings, on the other hand, were a bit more involved. You do have to finagle with two separate straps, both of which are a bit harder to adjust with gloves on, though still totally doable. That said, they were more comfortable over long hikes, and the heel portion of the bindings did feel more secure than the TSL bindings. I mean, I was definitely able to dial in a nice snug fit on the TSL shoes, but yeah, when I went to push down the heel lifts, my heels did pop out of the bindings and I had to tighten them after the first few minutes of hiking as, you know, everything got settled. But that brings us to the next big difference between these snowshoes. The MSR Revo Trail does not have a heel lift. And honestly, a heel lift makes a huge difference when you're spending hours hiking uphill like we did during testing. It really takes a lot of strain off your calves, so it's a, it's a nice feature to have. But that's one reason the MSR shoes are quite a bit less expensive than the TSL shoes. The MSR Revo Trail is about $200, and the TSL Symbios Hyperflex Instinct is $330. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big difference there. But we're not saying it's not warranted. For starters, I found walking in the TSL shoes much quieter than with the MSRs. Maybe I just walk funny? I mean, that's a distinct possibility. <laughs> the TSL shoes are also much more flexible. I mean, they're designed to be. Yeah. Yes, the MSR shoes have some flex, but not nearly to the degree of the TSLs, which really only matters if you're walking on a lot of rugged, uneven terrain. That said, the MSR is probably a bit better on powdery snow because they're more rigid. They should keep you on top a little bit better. Especially with the available tail accessory. Basically, they're both excellent snowshoes suitable for big adventures. You just have to decide which features you prefer. Extreme flexibility and a heel lift or more budget-friendly all-day comfort. You really can't go wrong either way. Although there have been some reports of these breaking a little bit easier. That is a concern I thought about as well because most of the frame of this one is plastic and it seems like the kind of plastic that if it gets super cold, it will snap a lot easier than the MSR frame. We haven't had any issues, but it's one of those things that's probably going to take a couple more seasons to test and reveal any potential issues. Speaking of teeth and traction, both of these shoes have very different traction and crampon type setups. As for the MSR, most of the traction is around the perimeter of the snowshoe and under the ball of the foot. Whereas the TSL, the crampons are all located right kind of in a line under the foot and on the toe. So it's just going to provide a sort of different traction experience depending on what sort of terrain you're on. So this is probably going to be better for rolling terrain and more powdery snow. Whereas the TSL is going to be a more aggressive grip for uh, more technical terrain and a lot more of an icy sort of surface. So on the MSR, even though I do expect it to be more durable overall, the metal construction does cause one issue. Unless you have a really wide stance, you're probably going to run into this issue here where the metal teeth on the side are gonna come along and scrape the surface of the other shoe. So you're gonna lose some paint, you're gonna scratch up the plastic. It's probably something you should just expect to happen. I obviously didn't have as much of an issue with the TSLs because the teeth are not located on the edge of the snowshoe, they're only in the middle. I really can't go wrong either way. So we'll put a link to both of them in the description below, so you can go check them out for yourself. But before you go figuring out what size you need, we'd be stoked if you clicked that thumbs up, hit subscribe, and rang that bell. That helps more folks find these helpful reviews. Plus, keeps you updated on when we publish new one. Also, it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And there's just not enough of that going around the world these days, so just do it. Then follow us on all the socials and on TerraDrip.com. Watch some more of these great videos. Get out there in the snow and wander on.